What's going on? I don't know. Here we are, 2019, uh, it's April, and we are on the boat in Ayamonte, and the idea is to head west again to Faro. So we're here for two weeks, then I'm away for another month and a half, and then I'm back for three months to um, just test out the boat a little bit, test out my crew, Karen, and just have a look around uh, the Algarve, because we bypassed it on the trip down here pretty much. We we sailed around the Cape St. Vincent and then right into Villa Mora, which is uh, near Albufeira, so about um, 30 nautical miles from here, maybe 20 nautical miles. It's not very far, but we missed everything we sailed in at night. You know, it'd be nice to see some of the cliffs and everything else that runs along the Algarve. We're going to try something a little different. We're going to try using a pressure cooker. That's that bad boy there. But we're having some problems. I know it's primitive technology, but we can't seem to master it. It doesn't seem to be um, actually sealing and uh, getting any pressure in it. So we're not sure if it's actually cooking. So that might be dinner out the window um, or over the starboard side. Well, the saga of the pressure cooker, I think, is is solved. The handle here wasn't actually secured on properly. Um, so anyhow, I, I've take, taken the handle off and reseated that, put it back on again. You know, everything about being on yachts, you have to be able to take things apart. So, so that's the saga. The reason we're using this is to try to save gas. Um, you can save at least two-thirds the amount of gas uh, when you're cooking if you use a pressure cooker and so we're trying to do that today we are going to go and explore um, Isla Cristina just off the mouth of the uh, Guadiana River which is where we are now in Ayamonte uh, we were going to sail to Faro but I've got 25 knot winds coming across Cape St. Vincent from a a deep low, well not really deep, but it's about 990, which is a fairly low low, sitting off the coast of Portugal, and it's been blowing these winds right around, and luckily we're a little bit um, shielded by Cape St. Vincent, otherwise it'd probably be over 30. Off to Isla Cristina, um, down on the, the mouth of the Guadiana River, and it's supposed to be raining at one o'clock, so we better get our skates on because it's now about 10 o'clock. So we gotta go. big question we're trying to answer today is who came up with blue and white stripes for nautical stuff? Where did that come from? Over here too. The changing cabins. What's going on there? I want to know. Tell me. I'll look it up. Let you know.
So long-standing uh, family discussion. Trifula or Trifula? If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I mean. It's Trifula, isn't it? It's like Triffids. It's a bit windy. Probably can't even hear me. So what's for dinner tonight? Uh, we're gonna try the slow cook, the uh, pressure cooker again for some vegetables and pork chops. Okay. So let's hope we repaired that thing correctly. What's going on? I don't know. Let's take it apart again. Okay, here's a problem. It keeps coming out of this valve here in the handle rather than out of this valve here with the weight, which means that it's never building up enough pressure to actually cook properly. Hey, hey, sorted. Look at that. Finally got it working. We've been in Spain now for a couple days and the uh, weather has not been very conducive to sailing west. You can see right here, I think you can see that, yep. Um, we've got lots of 20, 25 knot winds coming around Cape St. Vincent and we want to go west. So what we're going to do is do a little backup plan and we're going to Alcutum, which is right there. So it's about 18 miles north of Ayamonte and that should take us about four hours so we're going to leave on just after low tide um, so that we can follow the uh, the tide up the river. How you doing Joel? Uh, this is marvelous, absolutely marvelous. I'm enjoying myself. This is so warm. Uh, my, my down jacket, my fleece, and my follies aren't really necessary. And this rain is warm, trust me. So wet, Joel? Absolutely dry as a bone. Actually, I am, except for my trousers, which are not dry. How are you feeling now, Joel? I'm feeling great, Karen. Thank you. The sun is almost shining, and I'm drying out a little bit. Trousers are almost dry. Had a hot cup of tea, thanks to Karen. Woohoo! How are your biscuits, Karen? Good. A piece of chocolate biscuit. We came up here last year uh, to, uh, we were going to go up to Alakutum, but we just stopped halfway because of the tides and the winds and we wanted to get out to sea and things. So um, we stopped this little village here. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it, so don't don't kill me. And there's a, um, a little pontoon here that you can actually stay on. Uh, I don't think you're, you're supposed to stay overnight, but you can stay on it during the day. But it's pretty rickety, so I'd say, you know be careful you can stop there get off but there's not much in the town you can actually see that it's sinking feels a bit like we've gone up the wilds of the Zambezi here um, we're now in a very rural looking area and uh, the, there's a lot of junk in the water like big pieces of wood and stuff that we've got to keep an eye out for. One of the problems of El Kutum and San Lucar is that the uh, river's got massive rafts of like bamboo. So I've got to fend that off now. Yesterday we couldn't tell our speed through the water. Um, I can look on the GPS obviously, but the log here 
which is a, a sensor with a paddle wheel, shows you your speed through the water by turning these little paddles here. And that wasn't working obviously, so this morning we, because it's raining outside, I took this out and had all this rubbish crap come out of it, um, shells and all sorts. So I'm going to soak this and uh, put the plug, put it back in, swap with the plug that replaces it uh, when I'm done. Since it's still raining, we decided to go out and visit this castle that's on the, the uh, hill overlooking the pontoon. And it's one of two castles, a castle here in Portugal, and there's one across the river, the castle of San Marco, uh, which is quite, quite big. Uh, I think Spain wins in terms of bigness. The cannon's actually fractured, and you don't know if it was blown up or spiked, as they call it, by a, an army that invaded and took the castle, or if it was an accidental one. I mean, those cannons blew up all the time. They were not a safe weapon to use. But also attacking armies would sometimes spike them, as they called it. They would uh, fill the barrel, fill it up with too much explosive, and then set it off, and that would blow the cannon apart. And that was a way of not having to capture and hold the, the castle, but still getting rid of their armaments. And as with most archaeological sites in Europe, the Romans were here first. Statue of Apollo, or the, uh, that's a copy of the original that's in the National Museum. This is a whole room full of game boards, all carved into different stones. Kind of interesting that the guys were here for so many years that they carved these boards out of slate or mudstone or whatever and then played on those boards probably for years as they were stationed here. This castle was built in the 13th century and the castle over there, San Marco, was built in the 16th century. Well, what a day. Look at the rain, but look at the view too. Look at down there. And you can see Kelly. Ooh. I think we may beat a hasty retreat from this mountaintop because the rain in Spain is not falling mainly on the plain today. It's up in the mountains here. Karen had a brilliant idea. Although we didn't have any vinegar, we did have pickles. And using the pickle vinegar, I've soaked the, uh, the log all day now. You can see it runs a lot more freely. So what I'm going to do now is use an old toothbrush, which we won't be using for our teeth again, and clean this off. And all thanks to pickle vinegar, fantastic. Okay, time to replace the log down here in the through hole. Okay, here we go. That wasn't as swift as I wanted. Well, we left at oh silly hundred. Uh, on our way back down the Guadiana toward Ayamonte and uh, the uh, tide was against us to start with. It was absolutely pitch black and the water is full of all that rubbish that we've shown you before. So it's a bit of a stressful, or it's a stressful start, let's put it that way. Picked up over a knot now with the tide turning, finally. So we'll get some speed out and get down the river a little faster. One thing that's nice that we've noticed is they've put in uh, channel markers, lit channel markers, all the way out to at least Alakutum, um, which is really nice. And coming out this morning would have been so difficult without them.
turned into a pretty nice morning. I'm still in my full fellies because I'm a bit chilly. We're just getting close to the bridge now and uh, then about another mile or two to the turn into the marina. The tide is still going out, um, which means that uh, we will probably have a tide coming out of the marina, which is good for us because then we can back into our berth going uh, stern first. And with the sun still shining, we arrived back at our berth in Ayamonte ready for a cup of tea. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did like it and if you haven't subscribed. Join us next week as we go for a real sail and then explore Lisbon.